Welcome to Audit Archive, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. Join us as we explore the laws, regulations, and violations showcased in First Amendment audits, police interactions, and legislation. A military veteran was at a gas station convenience store where he purchased a pack of cigarettes and then met with a man he knew in the parking lot right outside. While the two men spoke, Mr. Smith noticed a patrol vehicle circling the property, but didn't give it too much attention. Soon enough, he drove out of the parking lot and noticed a patrol vehicle with lights and sirens turned on, tailing his vehicle. Mr. Smith promptly slowed down to show that he wasn't trying to evade the traffic stop, but continued driving about 300 yards ahead in an attempt to find a safe spot to pull over. Mr. Smith started recording the traffic stop on his mobile phone, while the officer had his body cam running also. Hands out the window and shut your mouth. I'll figure it out. Turn the car off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Hands out the window. Put your hands out the window. Don't move. I ain't moving. What's up? Can you unlock it? Huh? Where's my desk? Man, just Don't worry right about there. it. You keep your freaking hands out the window and shut your mouth. I'll figure it out. As we've just seen, Mr. Smith was treated in a very aggressive and hostile manner right off the bat. But for some reason, Mr. Smith was apparently under a high-risk traffic stop, which was made obvious by the way he was ordered to switch his car off and immediately put his hands out the driver's side window. And what made this ordeal even worse was the fact that Mr. Smith was grabbed by the arms and told to shut up as he questioned what was going on. The aggressive officer who initiated this traffic stop is Officer Justin Peppers of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. And his background sort of ties in with the way he treated Mr. Smith. For context, back in 2021, Officer Peppers ticketed a couple for dark tents on their vehicle a total of three times in two months. This prompted the couple to call 911 on Officer Peppers twice, and they also accused him of stalking and harassment. The couple eventually obtained a restraining order against him, but a judge dissolved it days later. Now, let's take a look at how Officer Peppers violently pulled Mr. Smith out of his vehicle and subsequently threw him to the ground before placing him in handcuffs. Hey, yeah. What's up, officer? What's going on? What's up? How you yeah. doing? What is going on? Come on, you gonna buck me? I'm, tri I'm trying. What's up? I'm chilling. What's up? I am chilling, oh, officer. Oh, come on, I'm doing around. that. I'm doing that. Look at me, I'm doing that. What's up? Come on, man. He resisted. Y'all wildin'. Come on, y'all wildin'. I ain't doing shit Camp or not? What's your name? What's that? Alright, sounds good. What's the, what's, what's up with this? What is he? Keep your feet is that up. something he has or is that you? That sound? I don't know. What was that? I don't know. I heard, I heard it. It wasn't sound. I thought it was coming from him right here. Do you have an alarm or something on you? Huh? Do you have an alarm or something on you? No. Nah. Charlie 3, 16. 1097 on the floor, Charlie 1. I got everything out of his pockets. Alright, give some, me your shoe. I have someone live last season. Well, right now, we might be going to jail. For what? I'll talk to you about that in a second. Okay. 
Going to jail? I got a lot of time with so I don't think I committed no crimes. I'm sure you don't. Officer Peppers not only held Mr. Smith down to the ground, but also started to search him while questioning him about whether he had a medical marijuana permit. However, this was a completely baseless question because marijuana clearly had nothing to do with the traffic stop. The officer has yet to explain the actual reason for the stop. It's also worth noting how Officer Peppers was quite literally fishing for something that he could use against Mr. Smith. Next, while Mr. Smith remained seated inside the patrol vehicle, Officer Peppers read him his Miranda rights, which essentially indicated that he was officially detained and subjected to questioning at that point. Yeah, yeah. All right. You're not under arrest. Okay. But I have to read your rights so that I can let you talk to me and ask you questions. Okay. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to an attorney. Before we ask you questions, then have an attorney present during questioning. If you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you at no cost before question begins. And if you answer questions now, you can stop at any time to consult an attorney. You all that? Now let's take a minute to discuss the lawfulness of this traffic stop. First and foremost, it's to be noted that, where a typical traffic detention is concerned, officers generally must have reasonable suspicion that the driver or someone in the vehicle is committing or has committed a crime. So by taking this into account, it does not appear that Officer Peppers had any reasonable suspicion at all. He had basically pulled Mr. Smith over just to find something to justify the stop. Secondly, this subsequently meant that Mr. Smith's Fourth Amendment right, which protects everyone from unreasonable searches and seizures, was basically violated, especially since he was thoroughly searched after being cuffed. Regardless, this is where Officer Pepper started to mindlessly question Mr. Smith about a bunch of irrelevant things that did not contribute to the investigation, if any, that he was apparently conducting. So, what makes this spot safer for you than the, where I tried to stop? You? I mean, y'all hit the lights on. I didn't want to pull in the middle of the road. That's dangerous for y'all. I didn't want to pull in a well lit area. You get y'all a lot of traffic. Okay. I ain't stupid. So, do you think that making a safe spot for us is is a uh, is something that you're authorized to do? I mean, I don't. I ain't that require authorization. I'm trying to be safe, just like y'all. I, I ain't posing uh -huh. a threat. I seen y'all circling. Wait, so are you trying to be safe? You're trying to find a safe spot for you or for me? For both of us. No, you don't get to do that. Okay, that's understandable. You can I make apologize. a claim that you're trying to make a safe spot for you. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. All right, why is this spot safer than that spot? It's, it's a well-lit area. I mean, it's not in the middle of the road. Do you see all those, do you see all those uh, street lights down there? I understand what you're saying. So but why is this spot more well-lit than down there? I mean, what was so detrimental between me stopping right there and stopping right here? I, I, well, I, actually, I'd, I'd like wrong. to ask you that. Why did you keep driving? I, had, I just told you that. Mm -hmm. I just told you that. Why There's would I stop There's a lot of moving, moving around in that car. You just looked in it. There's a lot of moving around whenever, when? uh, whenever I have my lights on. I rolled the windows down, put my driver's license, my registration mm -hmm. out the window. That's I'm supposed to ask when y'all first pushed my over, right? Y'all ain't do none of that. Come on, I'm not posting to stop a law abiding citizen. Shut your mouth. Don't get all f***ing loud with me. They ain't gonna change nothing. Hey, here. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. I'm having a conversation Shh. with you, right? No, you're trying to talk over me and you're trying to set up a okay. defense for yourself. Because what you did is called fail to obey. It's a fleeing charge and it's a felony three. Okay. If you'd like to go to jail on a felony charge, I'm good with it. I will not. All right. Well, then quit trying to talk your way out of this and just talk to me and actually tell the truth. Because I'm not stupid. Okay? I know you're trying to play me. Okay. So why didn't you stop? I just told you why I didn't stop. You I have no you other think you're smarter reason. than everyone Look else. Look what you just did to me. You just snatched me out of my car. I rolled the one that's down gave my license and my registration. You ain't reading the right. You snatched me out of the car. You, you're you, damn you. right I did. Why okay. did I do that? Why? I don't know. I how had the because, slightest idea. How about because? Run my name. For 300 yards, name. I had my lights. Did you? How many different times did I turn Listen, on? Listen, I'm a black man. I'm America. asking you a question. I am terrified of the police. Mr. Black Man, I'm asking you a question. How many times? Did, how many different sirens did I turn on? How many times did I lay on my horn? I have this. Like when you said pull over, I pulled over. You said throw the keys out of the car, I complied. No, when I said pull over, it was back there when I turned my lights and sirens on. Get in the car. Okay. Damn, you know what I'm Get in the car. Shut your mouth. At this point, it's no question that Officer Peppers truly disdained Mr. Smith and looked at him as someone not worthy of being treated in a reasonable and respectful manner. Hence, it wouldn't be an illogical assumption to make if we say that Officer Peppers was racially profiling Mr. Smith. Officer Peppers had essentially admitted that his reason for pulling Mr. Smith over and treating him with such aggression was his failure to pull over right away. But this does not justify the traffic stop itself, and we still don't know why Officer Peppers chased Mr. Smith down in the first place. Note that at this point, the traffic stop was completely unlawful and Mr. Smith was illegally detained. Despite this, the officers on the scene searched through Mr. Smith's car without his consent and Officer Peppers proceeded to threaten Mr. Smith with jail while justifying his aggression as personal safety. Huh? You got something about the hemp or whatever? Yeah, we can search it. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Did you ask him about medical marijuana car? He said no, right? He said no on that. Yeah. yeah, he said, what's hemp? Yeah, I think he was trying to figure out if he should say yes or no to that question. I thought he had 
had like a clip right here on his belt line, for, like like looking like an inside the waistband holster. And I thought maybe that's what he was doing. Yo, uh, it was that. That's what was this. Sir, when the lights go on and the sirens go on and you hear it all over, like, I know you heard the different sirens, the different tones, the horn, all that are indications that, hey, you probably shouldn't be picking what's a safe spot for me to stop. You never thought that once, huh? Huh? I haven't put over the, I haven't put over this level of aggression in a long time. Well, you see it as aggression. I see it as officer safety. Let me find a well lit area. I've never had a problem. Okay, so you're probably going to go to jail because what you're saying doesn't make any sense. There's no more lights here. There's probably less lights here than there are on the street. You don't have to apologize. I'm just asking you what you think, man. That's understandable. What's your, first, what's your last name? Sir? What's your last name? What's your last name, sir? So you're not going to give it to me? Following this, it became even more obvious that Officer Peppers was trying very hard to find a reason to arrest Mr. Smith and take him to jail. Watch as Officer Peppers questioned him once again about marijuana, this time accusing him of smoking inside the car, since there was an alleged odor coming from it. Why does the car smell like weed? Were you smoking weed at the uh, store? He was definitely moving around and I saw his head ducking down a little bit. I thought that if anything, it'd be under on the passenger side floorboard or the driver's side floorboard. Yeah. Just cause I, but that was only whenever I finally put like lights in his back window. Mm -hmm. when I saw him. Where'd you buy the firearm? Uh, pawn shop on, on Lenny Boulevard. Oh, the store? Yeah, pawn shop. Thank you get the paperwork? Yeah, it might be in the car. Okay. What, when did you get car. it? It's, it's been within a year. Okay. So you did all the paperwork, the background check and everything? Yeah. So why would they, how come you can buy a gun but you can't have a CWL? Hey, so what's the process of buying a gun, right? You go, you go to the background. I've bought guns my whole life, but I'm a veteran. I'm served 10 years in the So why wouldn't you be able to get CWL is what I'm trying to get to. But why, why is that an issue about within my legal limit? That's what I understand. Because I'm wondering if you're a prohibited possessor, or just prohibited from I purchasing or from what? I don't know what that means. I know. You don't need to know what it means. I know what it means. Right or wrong, right? I know what it means. You don't need to know what it means. I'm just trying to ask questions to determine which category you fall into. Why, if I'm within my legal limit, why does any of that matter? What does legal limit mean? If I can purchase a firearm, I can ride with it in my vehicle, right? If it's in the I don't, trunk, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. That's the law I study. The Florida gun law. That's the law. I, that's the law I abide by. Great, great. Do that's you mind all. if I do you mind if I ask questions to verify that? Of course, that? of course. Okay, cool. I mean, so, so you did the background check, yes. right? And you purchased it, but you, but when you did a background check for the CWL, they said no. Well, I, I, I don't understand where these questions are going. Like, it's, 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 all right. As seen in the footage, the officers located a legal firearm in Mr. Smith's trunk that was registered under his name. Even though there was nothing unlawful about it, Officer Pepper still questioned Mr. Smith about it, yet again displaying malicious intent. Did you recognize who he was talking to up there? Huh? So I saw him outside. I didn't see him talking to anybody. I saw him on the problem mic with the police watcher and all. You know who it was? Okay. Who were you talking to up at the store there, dude? Do you know his name? Huh? Slim? What's his other names? So you know his other names? Was he smoking weed? Huh? Well, someone, I was just wondering if someone was smoking weed around your car because it smells like weed in there. What? Why does your voice go like this? Like, just chill, dude. That sounds like you're trying to like hide something or trying to be defensive about something. I don't know, man. It's just weird. For some reason, Officer Peppers found it unusual that an innocent man who had committed no crime at all was defending himself. And now that Officer Peppers and his fellow officers had failed to find anything that would allow them to violate Mr. Smith's rights, they gave up. Watch as Officer Peppers told Mr. Smith that he wasn't going to charge him with fleeing and then proceeded to justify his actions again. All right. So here's what we're gonna do, okay? Uh, I'm not going to take you to jail for felony, right? A fleeing charge, um, even though you are eligible, and it would not be hard to explain why I believe that. But I'm gonna give you benefit of the doubt and go ahead and say that uh, I, 
that you truly just were severely mistaken about the law. Okay? Well, so, like I said, that would be safe to talk to you. Well, it's not safe for anybody. It's not safe for you. It's definitely not safe for me. Okay? Because when people do what you did, they're usually stuffing a gun under the seat, pulling a gun out from under their seat. I mean, I'm glad that you can laugh about it, but my wife and kids don't laugh about it. My wife and kids don't laugh about it. Okay? I'm glad you can laugh about it. All right? But the truth of the matter is, is that that's what I deal with. Okay? So when you're driving down the road, trying to be cute, thinking that you're smart, Really what you're doing is just amping the situation up. So we could have just, I could have walked up to your car and said, hey, I stopped you because your tint windshield's tinted, your, your front windows are too dark. This is the reason for the stop. Can I have your license, please? Thank you very much. We could have done all that. But when you continue to drive while the police are sounding their sirens and beeping their horns at you for about 300 yards, that is far too long for you to be reasonably trying to get to a safe place. Okay? It's just as lit back there as it is here. All right? So I want to change your mental process about that right now because you can't do that. You're, you're going to wind yourself up into a felony arrest by doing what you did. <clears throat> you say you've never been stopped, right? You've never been stopped and, and been aggressively stopped, right? All right, so I'm guessing that means that you haven't done this before. Okay? So when you're in a bad part of town... Yeah? Yeah, so you just drive as long as you want to and the police don't say nothing? I don't think it is, man. I, I agree. I, I don't think that is the case. All right, so I'll give it to you this time, but uh, I'll be honest with you, man. Like, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a smart thing to do, man. It's just, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't jive. The safety thing. Look, if we're in like a dark street and there ain't no street lights or whatever, okay. If an unmarked car is pulling you over on some untraveled road, all right, and you want to get somewhere where there's a marked unit or you know where there's a uh, traffic, okay, I get it. But when there's like three police cars with lights and sirens, sire, you know what I mean, and horns honking at you, I mean, that kind of means, I think I should stop now. It doesn't mean laugh at the police while we're trying to get you out of the vehicle. Like I said, I don't know what you just pulled out from under the seat or something. I got you. But I definitely don't play like that. You know what I mean? So that's why I said, that's why I had to keep your hands out of the car. I don't want you taking, it takes half a second for you to grab a gun and shoot. It takes me, on a good day, 1.8 seconds to grab my gun and shoot. So that means I can get shot about three or four times before I even get my gun out of the holster. Right? So these are the kind of odds that I got to deal with, man. And that's why what you think is aggressive, all right, we didn't hit you, we didn't bam you, all right, we let you go to the ground on your own, right? But it is what it is, man. Like, if you were intending to do me harm, I can't give you that option, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you one fix-it ticket. You got two windows that are too dark, your front windows are 20 all your windows are 20%. That makes the front windows too dark. And you got a windshield that's tinted, okay? What Officer Peppers had just done was try and make it appear as if he was cutting Mr. Smith a big break by not taking him to jail for fleeing. However, in reality, Officer Peppers definitely knew that taking Mr. Smith to jail would get him in severe trouble, as there was no apparent reasonable suspicion for the stop in the first place. So Mr. Smith was finally uncuffed, but what happened next was just unbelievable. Officer Peppers claimed that he couldn't issue tickets because his system wasn't working properly, and added that he needs to respond to a shots fired call down the road. All these excuses simply prove that Mr. Smith had done nothing wrong and was illegally detained for over 30 minutes. Face that way so I can take these off. shoes on. Alright, here's the deal. So my traffic program is messed up, so I can't write a ticket right now. And we have gunshots down the road that I'm going to go respond to. So, so those two reasons are getting you out of ticket tonight, okay? Your front windows are too, your front windows are too dark, though, in your windshield, just so you know. Huh? Where you left it? What Mr. Smith was referring to at the end of the footage was his mobile phone. Remember, Mr. Smith had started to record the traffic stop before being pulled out of the car. So ideally, his phone would be at the same spot still recording, right? Well, see for yourself. One of the officers on the scene grabbed the mobile phone, stopped the recording, and put the phone somewhere else in the car. 
this was yet another violation of Mr. Smith's rights. His phone is his personal property, and officers have no lawful reason to tamper with it in any way. Soon after this incident, defense attorney Gene Nichols, who is not associated with the case, viewed the video and says while he doesn't know what transpired before the phone started recording, he questions why Smith was handcuffed and why his car was searched. Mr. Smith commented, stating that, they got me out of the car and put me on the ground and literally put their whole force in my back to the point where I have pain and I'm a veteran. You know, I'm a disabled veteran, so like, I had to go to the hospital, you know, and get a shot for the pain because it was just so excruciating. Following this, Mr. Smith filed a formal complaint against the officers involved. As of the date of this recording, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office has only stated that we have been made aware of the below information by way of a formal complaint by Mr. Smith. The incident is currently being administratively reviewed, and once that has been completed, the outcome would be made a public record. Mr. Smith did state that he is considering legal action, but no further updates have been made in regard to that. And the outcome- One account comment. This cop's name and face should be plastered everywhere. He is everything a cop should not be. What a disgusting human being. Another, that cop is outrageous. He has no business being any authority over anyone. I hope the driver gets a lot of money. He deserves it, J. Roger says. The officer is a danger to himself and to the public. He really knows he knows the law, what a joke. Other accounts, a waste of taxpayer dollars. They need to be fired. Otaka Tapital replied, so the officer feared for his life because the guy stopped only 300 yards past where they initially started the unfair stop? He serves zero purpose. Take his badge now. His badge now.